Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. In a landmark decision, the U.S. Supreme Court has banned race-based admissions in colleges and universities, a long-standing precedent that has benefited black and Latino students in higher education. The Chief Justice said students must be evaluated based on their experiences as an individual and not on the basis of race. The court said admission programs by Harvard and University of North Carolina violated the Equal Protection Clause because they failed to offer measurable objectives to justify the use of race. The court further added that the programs involve racial stereotyping and had no specific endpoint. Joining us now to talk more on the significant ruling, we're joined by Ro Khanna, representative of California Congress and member of the Democratic Party. We will also be speaking to Ro Khanna about the Prime Minister's visit to the United States and the future of Indo-US ties in defense, critical technology and trade. Mr. Khanna, the Biden administration has condemned the Supreme Court ruling on affirmative action. How do you think this will hurt or impact the student community in the United States? Well, it's a challenge. Uh, as a graduate of Yale Law School and the University of Chicago, I benefited from having a very diverse student body, people uh, who were of Asian-American background, Indian-American background, African-American background, Latino background, and, of course, white students. And this has prepared me to be a leader uh, representing Silicon Valley in Congress. We would be doing a disservice to our students and educational institutions if we lose that diversity. Hmm. Uh, how do you think Asian Americans uh, could be impacted by this? The universities could be impacted, absolutely. I mean, this is going to make it harder for universities, colleges uh, to have the diverse representation. I mean, these institutions uh, are remarkable in getting people from every part of, the, uh, of America and having students from different parts of the world. Uh, and now it's going to make that a harder challenge for them. Right. What will be the legal way out of this? How difficult would you uh, think it is to get it, uh, get a legal way out and reverse back to the earlier policy? Well, Justice Roberts has said that uh, in uh, students' essays, they can refer to their race, they can refer to their background and their hardships uh, and their life experience. So that may be something that uh, the admissions officers can work with. I know university presidents are looking for ways to keep the diversity on their college campuses while complying with the law. And I think in the next three, four months, uh, they were going to do a hard work to make sure America doesn't lose this competitive edge mm -hmm. of having some of the most uh, diverse uh, colleges and universities in the world. Right. Uh, Congressman Khanna, coming to the Prime Minister's visit last week, he spent a considerable time with American businesses, with uh, President Biden as well. What do you think this visit and the talks between President Biden and Prime Minister Modi do for Indo-US ties going forward? Well, in strengthening the ties. It was a, a very successful visit. We had the jet engine deal that was announced uh, uh, to, to India. Uh, India is committed to purchasing uh, a lot of uh, new uh, advanced de defense technology from the United States, helping create jobs in the United States, helping bring our countries together. There is technology partnership. Uh, I was uh, uh, able to, to meet uh, with the prime minister uh, for about 25 minutes. Uh, we had a wide ranging discussion. Uh, on the importance of technology, on climate change, on the importance of defense cooperation, on the importance of people-to-people -people ties. Uh, he was well aware of the five Indian Americans in Congress. And we discussed pluralism, we discussed human rights. Uh, so it was a very uh, constructive uh, few days. Right. Uh, to ask you about the GHAL deal, it has been said that U.S. has not transferred this level of technology to any other ally. And this is an unprecedented deal. Uh, will it go through the U.S. Congress easily because it, it needs an authorization from the U.S. Congress? I believe it will, and I have led on this as the U.S. Indo uh, co-chair in Congress. Mike Waltz and I have been leading, uh, and I expect that it will go through and we will continue to work for it. I led uh, last year the amendment to make sure India didn't face sanctions, CATSA sanctions, uh, under the uh, regime that was penalizing anyone that had business relationships with Russia because I uh, wanted to make sure that the U.S.-India relationship continued to improve. And I think the same coalition that voted for that amendment will vote to approve this. Right. Uh, from you, uh, Congressman Khanna, was there any kind of message 
also from U.S. politicians, the U.S. government, to the Prime Minister on the Ukraine war. What kind of a role India can play in stopping uh, this war? That emerged in discussions. I think it was important that the Prime Minister affirm the principle of sovereignty, uh, that Ukraine's territorial sovereignty matters, that they have to have territorial integrity, uh, and that Russia should not be uh, encroaching on Ukrainian uh, territory. And that, that what the end of the war uh, entails is Russia pulling out of the territories uh, that it invaded uh, illegally. Uh, I do think the Prime Minister uh, in India can play a role, hopefully, in bringing us to a just peace. Right. Also to ask you about uh, the importance of this visit and the relationship with India for President Biden at this juncture and for the United States at a time where it's trying to counter the expansionist, the aggressive economic version of China at one hand. It is trying to counter Russia. Uh, how significant is the time, the investments U.S. is making in the relationship with India? It's uh, one of the most important allies for the United States of the 21st century. It's an uh, uh, a incredibly important ally. Uh, we have, of course, strong people-to-people -people ties, cultural ties with India that should not be underestimated. And that uh, was on full display with the prime minister's visit. But we also have mutual interests. Neither uh, the United States or India wants to see China emerge as a hegemon in Asia uh, mm -hmm. with its uh, territorial expansionist ambitions. Uh, and the relationship can make sure that no country emerges as a hegemon in Asia and that we respect the self-determination of all nations in the world. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you about the unfinished agenda. Do you feel there are certain areas where India can remove barriers or tweak policies in order to uh, gain more investments from the United States, have a bigger presence of the U.S. business community? Well, I was talking to Tim Cook, Apple CEO. I know they're investing. They're in my district. They're investing in moving from China to, to India. Some of their uh, supply chain and other companies are looking at the same thing. Uh, there is still uh, a fair amount of uh, bureaucratic challenges uh, in doing that. Uh, the, there's less corruption, which has been a positive. Uh, but uh, to the extent that uh, that process of uh, allowing companies to move from China to India to have India emerge as the manufacturing hub of Asia uh, can be made easier uh, the more companies like Apple you will see making that move. Right. Uh, my last question, uh, Congressman Khanna. Of course, uh, there was a big debate in India. This was about Barack Obama's statements on minority rights in India. How do you see this uh, backlash that came from uh, Indian politicians, the Indian government? I, I think what President Obama said was uh, basically U.S. policy. And President Obama, of course, was a very uh, a, a pro-India uh, president. And all he said was that uh, while we have strong relationships with India, while we strengthen that relationship, uh, both countries need to make sure that we are protecting uh, minority rights and pluralism. Uh, that is a challenge within the United States. We have had debates about how we strengthen voting rights in America, how we make sure that uh, we're not, we don't have uh, police uh, violence against uh, uh, young uh, men of color who are maybe unarmed. Uh, it's a challenge for our own nation, and it's a challenge uh, uh, within India. Any nation that is a multi-ethnic society, multi-racial society, uh, faces challenges of being a strong liberal democracy. And I think that's all President Obama was saying. Right. And uh, one more question. We saw at least eight or ten deals being signed, predominantly the technology partnership, especially on critical and emerging technologies uh, being lifted to another level. What more investments and what more regulatory challenge changes do you expect that will take place within the U.S. administration to enable more technology transfer to India uh, in the days to come, both through executive actions and through legislative actions, both in defense and in the field of uh, other critical technologies? Well, I'm leading the amendment with Senator Warner to have India recognized as a major uh, non-NATO ally. Uh, I, of course, it doesn't make sense to have India in NATO, NATO is largely European, and I don't think India would want to march lockstep uh, with U.S. policy, being an independent uh, uh, the nation 
that has its own uh, geopolitical interests and foreign policy, but they can be a major non-NATO ally. That would facilitate even more uh, sensitive uh, uh, te technology and defense cooperation. But apart from that, one of the areas we need to improve is uh, scientific research. Uh, the United States has far more joint papers penned with Chinese scientists at the National Science Foundation than in, with Indian scientists and Indian researchers. Now, part of that is a lot of the Indian researchers and scientists are now in the United States or in Europe uh, because of uh, uh, the diaspora. But there's still a lot of brilliant people within India, of course, and, and we need to facilitate more of that cooperation. All right. Uh, Congressman Khanna, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Global Eye, giving us your view on the Indo-US relationship going forward and what are some of the unfinished agenda that India needs to f work on in order to gain more investments from U.S. companies. Thanks once again for being with us. Thank you very much. On that note, we take a short break here on Global Eye, but don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll get you an exclusive interview with the World Bank Country Director on uh, the investment, the funding that has been announced by the World Bank for India's renewable energy transition.